largest affordable housing initiative in Canada. The Elm Centre provides 300 affordable homes to women-led families, women fleeing domestic abuse violence, and Aboriginal families. The family, sorry, the centre will also provide job training and serve as the administrative headquarters of YWCA Toronto that will feature an auditorium, which you're in, the Women's Resource Centre, meeting spaces and a restaurant. I can't wait for that to open. We are proud of this new facility that will enrich and enhance the quality of lives for women and men and women and families across the city. Best wishes for much success. Mayor Rob Ford, Councillor Anna Bailao, City of Toronto, May 22nd. Thank you all for coming today. And like Dr. Leach, I spent uh, the past 25 years as a newborn intensive care specialist across the road at SickKids. Today, it's especially heartwarming to be able to look across and see the Elm Center take its place on Elm Street. Thank you, Parli Parliamentary Secretary <coughs> Dr. Leach, Minister Wynne, Councillor Bailao. Thank you also to Councillor Wang Tam and to MP Olivia Chow for being here today. And thank you to the tenants of the YWCA Elm Center for welcoming all this chaos into your home with such grace and generosity. The YWCA Elm Center provides 300 affordable apartments for single, low-income women, women with children, women living with mental health and addiction issues, and families of Aboriginal ancestry. In addition to providing this much-needed, affordable, and supporting housing, the YWCA Elm Center is also a community hub with this large auditorium that you sit in today named in honor of Senator Nancy Ruth and community meeting rooms as well. A project like this requires vision and determination, not from a single leader, but from many. Some of the greatest supporters of the YWCA Elm Center were on the Elm Campaign Cabinet, co-chaired by Arlene Pearly Ray and Diane Walker, who is here with us today. Let me take a moment, Elm Center. Their vision, their generosity, their hard work, and their willingness to take a risk on this project because they understood its importance and its potential has changed our entire organization and surely our city. Thank you so much. Under their leadership, the cabinet helped raise more than $15 million. I'd like to invite the members of the cabinet who are in attendance here today to accept, to stand, and accept our heartfelt gratitude for your hard work and deep commitment. Ladies. From $5 to $5 million. Over 1,200 individuals, corporations, foundations, and associations invested in this project. We'd like to, to acknowledge and to thank the generosity of our lead donors to this project, the families of Ken Thompson and families of Audrey Campbell, Margaret and Wallace McCain, and Senator Nancy Ruth. And a special word of thanks to the YWCA Toronto staff who contributed more than $60,000 to this center. <laughs> Torontonians' generosity is a clear reflection of our shared understanding that everyone needs a home in which to feel safe and to experience comfort and support. Thank you for choosing to be part of the YWCA's effort to build a better city in which we can all thrive. In 2006, when we began this project, we were tremendously excited, a little bit nervous. Sometimes we were even very nervous. <laughs> but we were never dissuaded. During the life of this project, We've had some really stellar women working on our board of directors whose confidence, skill, and determination were essential to the success of this project. And I'd like to thank our past and present board chairs for their wonderful leadership. Kristen Wigley Cosman, our past board chair, is here with us today. What a terrific morning this is. Who says Toronto doesn't have a heart? Thank you. 
it is now my pleasure <laughs> to introduce Heather McGregor, YW Toronto CEO. <laughs> at the helm of the YWC Toronto for more than 18 years. Her dogged determination, her faith in Torontonians, and her insistence that affordable and permanent housing is not only the solution to homelessness, but also essential to ensuring that women and children are able to build strong lives for themselves. In large part, what drove the creation of the YWC M Center, Heather. <laughs> <laughs> this really is a wonderful occasion. And, you know, I, I have very clear notes about what I'm supposed to say and what I'm not supposed to say, but I would really like to thank everyone in this room for, for the creation of this wonderful, wonderful program. Um, I know so many of you are well. Donors, um, government, supporters, uh, staff. We have an incredible <coughs> staff team who made this happen. Um, civil servants who, who made things so easy for us, and some of whom I think we're prouder of this building than we are, if it's, it's hard to believe, but I think Sean knows that's true. Um, it has really been a very exciting ride. And uh, Rosemary's not kidding when she said there were some moments when we took a very, very deep breath. We did have one weekend where we had no mortgage funding, uh, but we had signed with the contractor. So that was a very, very bad weekend. However, however we were absolutely determined to, to go ahead. Um, so we were told that we wouldn't get the, the necessary financing. We were told that we wouldn't get the uh, necessary uh, financial uh, donations, philanthropic donations. And we were told that we, as women, didn't have the expertise to build a project that was $80 million. Well, you can see we did succeed. because of many, many of you in this room were, were determined that we would succeed. And we succeeded because there are 150,000 individuals on the waiting list for affordable housing. We had no choice but to succeed. We succeeded because uh, women struggling with mental health issues and trauma and violence asked us to create a place for them. Because women asked for a place in which they could get the support and resources they needed from an organization that understands violence and trauma and its impact on women and children. We could not fail those women and those families. And yet, as significant as this success is, we need so much more. We need more affordable housing. 150,000 people is a very large number. And we can do this, I believe, because this project demonstrates that it's possible from commitment from three levels of government, from commitment from individuals in Toronto to build affordable and permanent housing. We are a city, I really believe, that we're a city that is eager to support one another, to foster inclusiveness, and to take on hard issues like violence, homelessness, mental health. And we take it on with optimism and generosity. I want to thank, in particular, our partners who've been there from the very beginning, Wigwaman, the Jean Tweed Center, and St. Michael's Hospital. 
I also want to thank our, our architects, Hilditch Architect and Regional Architects. Um, and Minister Wynn, you, you mentioned the, uh, the generosity of the architects for the original House of Industry. Our architects have also been very generous. There. Uh, guidance, insight, and expertise. And actually, I should stop here. I, I want to particularly mention Infrastructure Ontario, who who helped us with the with the mortgage uh, financing. They, in such a generous and sensitive way, worked with a group of women who were determined but inexperienced at construction, and they worked with us so so well. So all of this guidance, insight, and expertise helped us to ensure that the people who most need ELM have access to it and our programs are of the highest possible quality. <laughs> and then, finally, let me thank our wonderful MC, Andre of CBC News Toronto. <laughs> we appreciate your time and expertise. I hope she is actually here. And I hope she's not threatened by my performance. <laughs> <laughs> so now, <laughs> I, I think this is, will be our favorite uh, part of this morning. We get to hear from the women who have found a home at the YWCM Center. Unfortunately, the first tenant uh, listed on your program, Angela Mali, a tenant Winona's place, was not able to, to come this morning. But please let me introduce you to my co-interviewee on CBC Metro Morning this morning, Anna Lee Hopkins. Without a home, to me it means to be in limbo, a constant state of lost, unwanted, forgotten, and absolute uncertainty. It does not know where you'll be sleeping or where your next meal will come from. It does not know if you'll have to fight for a bed, a spot, a box, or a sandwich. It does not know if you'll be safe or whether you'll survive. Most of my life I was bounced around from foster home to foster home. Each time I felt homeless, in limbo, in a constant state of uncertainty until the streets welcomed me. It wasn't about being too lazy, looking for a free handout, or that I didn't want something I could call my own. It was the availability, affordability, was I presentable? Would I pass a credit check? Were my clothes presentable? Was I presentable? I was, whoops, I was terrified to talk to people due to the judgment they had already made on me as they walked by. Most importantly, I was terrified to live on my own. The streets were no kinder than the many foster parents, yet they shared a familiar curiosity. They were inviting, and I could hide and seclude myself from the world. Once again, I was invisible. What is hope? Hopeless, sorry. What is hopeless? The dictionary says it means without hope, despairing, impossible to accomplish, resolve, or solve. To me, it's a feeling that things will never get better. It's fearing you didn't deserve to get better, be better, and knowing it wouldn't when people walk by you with disgust all over their faces and you slowly slip away into the cracks of the sidewalk. It knows help is close by, but you possess no social skills to reach out for it. It's watching your dreams die and never feeling understood or safe. It does not know if you'll be able to survive it just one more day. What is hope? The dictionary says it means, it means the feeling that is wanted can be had or the events will turn out for the best. To me it means the YWCA Elm Center. It surrounds you with positive people and supports. It's about building a community of resources where you're being understood, helped, and finally heard. It's the stepping stones they provide that become your lifeline to building a bridge and stepping into the future with confidence. It knows that finally living is possible and is so is achieving all your dreams. Hope is what the YWCA Alp Center has provided to many women, including myself. For once in my life, I feel hopeful and alive. I see the future as very hopeful. I have dreams and goals again, and I am confident that I will see them through. I am trying new things that help me develop social skills and make me feel better about myself. It is, oh, my apartment isn't just affordable, it's absolutely beautiful. 
It's also within a community of resources and acceptance where I feel welcomed, heard, understood, and safe. Thank you for providing me these stepping stones. I plan on using them to heal and better myself so that in turn I can leave them for others. Thank you. adventure. The road of life has as many words to describe it as the steps we use to walk along it. I'll pull up these words, frightening, challenging, amazing, and adventure and faith, hope, and love to describe this present leg of my journey. Before the YWCA Elm Center was built, I actually used to work on this exact building site as a registered nurse, when then it was a senior's retirement and long-term care residence called the Laughlin Center. Now I live here, and, and words can't express in full how glad I am to be living here, to have finally found a safe and comfortable home. <clears throat> When I got ill, my life was transformed. The illness I developed at the time had not yet developed a case definition or guidelines for care as it now has today. So my health continued slipping. I eventually was no longer able to work. As my health deteriorated, my housing deteriorated, I became progressively more physically and mentally disabled and more so terribly isolated. Sick, living in horrible, dangerous conditions, I was truly caught in these circumstances. And when you're sick and you don't have a lot of money, people leave you feeling like you haven't any value at all. So often what I said was ignored or dismissed. So often my needs were ignored or dismissed. I was often left begging to be heard begging to have my needs acknowledged, but my appeals went unheard. I can't tell you how it crushes the human spirit to be treated in such an inhumane manner. I've had so many visits to doctors and hospitals that could have been completely avoided if I had just had decent housing and support to keep me healthy. It's a terrible feeling to be bounced around the system and never finding the necessary support. Again, I must say and share with you how I felt dehumanized. I have been trying so very hard too to get good housing, but everywhere I went I was denied housing because of my source of income and in some instances I think because of my disability. But it was a serendipitous find the YWCA Elm Center. Talk about, oops, talk about being a turning point for me. Talk about a hand that reaches out with heart to help somebody step up. I am so very thankful to be here. I have a beautiful place to live with other women, and with support, and with community. I have been reminded what it is to be a human, to be with other people and to be able to share with other people, and to becoming well enough again to experience and participate in the wonder that is life and all the beauty that surrounds me, and not just living overwhelmed by the barriers and struggling with the negative effects. I want to live I want to, oops, I want the freedom to live full out with my disability to whatever that potential might be. I can manage my disability, but not when I have no support. People with disabilities need different kinds of supports. Some may need mobility aid, some may need glasses. The point is, that with the right support, we can go for more in actualizing our potential. With the right support comes discovery and growth 
and participation and contribution to our communities, we can be fully human. The YWCA Elm Center is my home. All of us need a home so that we can be safe, so that we can be cared for, so that we can offer others care, so that we can build on our strengths and our dreams. I will certainly fly here, if I may say, kind of like a goose, <laughs> being alongside and together with and taking each other further and higher. Thank you so very much. My last name is pronounced Meniz, but I carry my ex-husband, abusive ex-husband's name, and it's actually been known as Menace, but we'll call it Meniz. <laughs> Anyways, uh, this is a very exciting time for me today. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about who I am and where I was and where I'm going from here. Sometimes when I revisit my life and my journey, I often wondered why things happened to me because I thought I was a good mom and I was a good wife and I was a good daughter. But sometimes women, good women, marry, with the hopes and the dreams of having a better life for themselves and for also for their children. I know my own mother and my mammy before her <coughs> were abused women. But at that time, many years ago, there weren't shelters. And so not only did they endure the pain on a physical level, an emotional level, but they also took their children through it as well. My mammy was only 47 years old when she passed away. And the misfortune is that my grandfather was responsible for that. My mother died a broken woman as well, 73 years old, as an alcoholic. I always thought very strongly that I would never be like them, that I would always be happy and always my star apartment, that everything's working and it's so bright and beautiful and clean. I'm truly grateful. I want to extend a thank you to those who contributed, who don't know who the recipients are, and us three are three of the women that are truly grateful. We'd like to thank you for this vision of the one-stop shopping that will continue to help women like myself and others like me. And I truly, from the bottom of my heart, my 91-year-old father said thank you because he thought maybe he was going to have to take his 63-year-old daughter back into the house again. I said, don't worry, Pops. The wise got it under control. <laughs> thank you. First of all, for your brave and uh, strong and impassioned words, thank you for being brave enough and strong enough to share them with us, to share your stories. Thank you very much. And to our ministers, and to our counselors, and to the YWCA staff, thank you very much for having me. I have been looking forward to this day for a very long time, for over a year. and. Because an opening like this really represents the city of Toronto. This is not as tall as the CN Tower. This is not as glamorous as the Trump Tower. But this is a building that houses the bravest, the strongest, and the most valuable women in the city of Toronto. <laughs> the Elm Street Centre have teamed up with the very talented musician Stephanie Martin 
They've created an original piece of music, and with the help of another very talented musician, Bonnie Brett, the Elm Community Choir is going to perform for you their piece, A Place Where I Am Home. of my colleagues in the media have as well, women who have survived, women who have barely survived and have been brave enough to leave or to ask for help, uh, and to see a group of women to be able to stand there and sing that they feel safe, to sing even, and to say they feel safe, to say they found home is, is incredible to see. You guys have done great work. Congratulations. Before I invite up the ribbon cutters, they will include our speakers, as well as Diane Walker, who's the co-chair of the Elm Cabinet, and Julia, uh, Julia Haylock, a YWCA staff member. I want to extend an invitation to Tool Reserve. Yeah. 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 
Ja, 